All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you three new chart types, okay? Slightly more advanced, but only, only slightly, okay? And the charts are a heat map, right? Uh, a tree map, or sometimes I think it's called hierarchy maps, and a packed bubble chart, right? Each one can show things a little bit differently. So let's start with uh, the heat map, all right? So let's grab, I want to grab category. I want to grab subcategory and I want to grab segment okay and I want to fill this with some value actually maybe not segment I've used segment let's use maybe manufacturer what do we got in there ooh way too many okay maybe not manufacturer let's grab all right we'll stuck with segment and then let's also put region in here okay that's good right so let's just make this a little bit bigger uh, I'm gonna make this I'm going to hide this for a second. Just right click and hide. I'm going to make this an entire view just so it covers the whole thing. And then now I want to populate this with some sort of measure, some sort of value. So I want to see profit. So I'm going to grab profit and drop it in text this time. If I drop it in here, it's going to create for me lots of little bar charts, right? As you can see, it doesn't really show me anything, right? So I just want the label. So I'm going to move that here to label and to actually just give me the value. Now, if I were to ask you, what's the lowest value in here? You wouldn't know, right? You'd have to search for it. So what we do is we use a heat map. And the heat map shows us the distribution of the different values. So here's how you do it. You grab profit again, and you drop it into color. All right, That's step one. Now what you'll notice is it's color-coded the text, as in text color. But what we want to actually to do is color the cell right? The space that it's in as a color, because that's a lot more visible, right? So what we do is we go here to marks and we set this to square, right? This is a heat map, okay? Because now it's showing me where the highest and lowest values are. This one is my highest, right? And I didn't even have to read it, like it Tableau tells me, right? And all the orange ones are the low value. So again, we can change this color. Let's just customize this. Um, the value I like, I really like red and black just because red is really visible and black people tend to ignore. Yeah. So if I go red and black, I want to see everyone with the lowest profit and the ones where um, they're doing well, I'm not interested. Okay. So if I go OK, now as you can see, all the reds have come out, right? Now it doesn't matter how many times I change the grouping here, it will continuously just organize itself for me. Okay doesn't matter how many times, right? Maybe that's not the best grouping, but it just keeps doing it, okay? So let's say I've got a segment like that. So let's say I want to compare all the centrals across the segment. I just swap these. So now that's all central. So I can see, oh, there's something going on with tables. That's the first meeting I'm going to have. And actually, if you look at it, tables is actually failing or like not making very much across all regions. So that's something interesting, right? So that's basically a heat map. It's very simple. Right. Um, one other thing you can do is, and uh, a lot of, uh, I think I've seen a few journalists do this, is actually get rid of the numbers, just color code it. So if I get rid of this um, label part, right, again, it's, it's quite impactful when you look at it this way, right? Even if you do something that's a lot more granular, a lot more, you know, space. So let's grab, get rid of region, let's get rid of segment. If I grab that manufacturer again, and go add all members. Now this thing is just telling me that there's lots of manufacturing vertical lines. So it just goes, are you sure? Because it's gonna take a little while. So I just go add all members, right? Again, you can still see the reds, right? Manufacturer is probably not the best example. Let's grab, um, let's grab city actually. Oh, it's still too granular. Let's grab state. Ah, still too granular. Let's go country. Right, that's a good one. Right, so I can see oh something going on in Netherlands, right? It the data just tells you you don't actually have to um, read numbers, right? You can already see that something going on here that we have to address, right? So, anyways, I could go all day about um, these kinds of graphics. The next one we're going to do is what's called a uh, a tree map. All right, so let's go open new sheet and tree map. Let's go grab some values. So let's grab again sales, and I'm going to put it. Oops, let's grab it and put it in here. Okay, so go that. Then I'm going to change this to square, 
right? So you can see it's actually put a square there. Now I want to split the sales up. You know, I want to segment it. So let's say I want to see it by. Yeah, let's see. I want I want to see it by subcategory. All right. So I grab subcategory and I put it into colors. Right. And as you can see, it's split them all up. Right. But now I want to see them based on what the sales are. So what I do is I grab the sales and I drop it into size and it's created this and this is a tree map. So what it's trying to do is it's putting all the highest values in the top left, okay? And all the lowest values to the bottom right. And this is really good because it kind of tells you straight away, oh, these are the highest ones, right? And if you also have a lot of rows and color, it's a great way to condense that data into like a really small space. Whereas I could do something like that, um, I can change the coloring. So instead of grouping it by subcategory, I can do it by category, right? And then I can split these in their individual ones, right? Uh, in terms of their subcategories. But I can't use color again, because if I use color, it just does that. So what I have to use is what's called detail, right? This one right here. So maintain categories the color, but split it using detail. So now I've got individual ones and I want these labeled. So let's go grab subcategory, put it into label, right? And let's just flip this. So I can actually see, right, the red, which is technology, the highest sales is copiers, phones, and then these get smaller. Again, let's try something a little bit bigger. Let's do manufacturer into detail, right? And again, it splits. Even though you can't read it, you can already say that um, actually, let's get rid of subcategory. You can already see that these are the highest, okay? And it's really good as well because let's say you have three different regions. You can actually see between them which one's the highest, right? And also in terms of the grouping, the first hierarchy here is category. Then it splits it by manufacturer. But you can actually reverse this. You just grab manufacturer, put it above category. And then you get something like that. So it doesn't matter which category they're from. It's just going to sort in one massive group. So a lot of different things you can do with tree maps. Uh, we use it a lot at my work. My boss absolutely loves them. Right? Um, the third one I'm going to show you is uh, Pack the Bubble, which is super fun. Okay. So again, let's start with just some sales values. Let's grab that, put it in here. And uh, we're going to change this to uh, Circle. Okay, so now I've got a little circle, and I also want to add size to this. So let's grab sales and add some size. Okay, nothing's going to happen because there's only one value. And let's do manufacturer this time. Okay, and I'm going to drop this into detail. Right, and let's get rid of this label. I'm not actually interested in the label. That is a packed bubble. Right, the bigger the bubble, the higher the value. Right. Now, because it's still one color, it's hard to see anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab sales and put it into color. So I'm going to grab sales, put it into color. I'm going to change this color to, again, black red. right? And the higher the value, I want it to be red. So instead of manually changing this, I can just go reverse and go OK. So straight away, three values pop out, one, two, and three. It's hard to see that. Like, you can put it in a, in a bar graph, but... It doesn't show everything and the cool thing about a packed bubble when you use it correctly is it makes it forces you to ignore the small issues right it makes you address the big issues which a lot of the times micromanagers and people who want to cover everything and who don't know how to prioritize it becomes an issue for us at my work when we do this kind of stuff we say who are these three and what are we doing about it i mean we can't do anything about the rest of them we haven't got the resources to cover everything Let's just solve these three things, and then we'll move on to the next three. Because what happens is, let's say we fix these, one, two, three, right? And the way I select this is I just hold control on the keyboard, right? Control, 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 right? I want to get rid of this in my data, so I just hover, exclude, right? And you just leave your mouse over the point, okay? Then you do your next set. So now you can see there's a lot more red. All right, let's fix these ones. One, two, three, four, right? Even that one. Let's deselect. Okay, we fix these ones. Let's get rid of these. Right? And then you keep going. So it's really great for deep diving, which I won't get into. I'm a bit excited to do that, but I won't do that right now. 
right? So let's drop this in terms of detail, okay? Let's do this in terms of subcategory. Let's add detail in here. And let's add the subcategory into the labels, okay? So again, these things, they don't really make much. I'm not interested, right? Um, I can actually grab category and group them like this, right? Or like this. Or I can actually grab segment and do this, right? Again, different ways to show your data. This actually tells me that we're not really doing much in home office. A lot of it's in the consumer products, bookcases, storage, copiers, and phones, right? This one I'm probably going to hit first because it has two of the biggest ones. So who do I have to talk to about that? So again, it's, it's just great to actually see your data, not just read it, right? So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.